RAS is uh, reflex anoxic seizures or reflex asystolic syncope, uh, the same thing. It's a severe type of syncope that is going unconscious uh, because of lack of oxygenated blood supply to the brain. So it's a type of severe syncope um, that's triggered by a reflex through the vagus nerve from the brain to the heart that tells the heart to slow down or stop temporarily. So RES is a type of neurally mediated syncope, meaning that it's mediated through the nervous system. So it's essentially the brain doing a reflex, telling the heart to slow down, vagus nerve telling the heart to slow down, and then going unconscious because the heart slowed down for too long or slowed down too extremely. There are lots of different triggers that people can have and uh, some people uh, will only have a few triggers occasionally and will have a lot of the attacks will happen with, with no apparent trigger. But having a trigger just for some of the attacks is really helpful for the doctor in making the diagnosis uh, that it's RAS. And the kinds of triggers that will happen for some of the attacks would be things like an unexpected sudden pain, like stubbing your toe or uh, bumping into something or uh, perhaps uh, being bumped on the back of the head at nursery school by uh, another child hitting you with a toy, something like that. So an unexpected unpleasant thing. Sometimes crying can be a trigger uh, if they're upset over something and, and are crying. Um, sometimes the sight of something uh, scary or or uh, blood or white coats, that sort of thing, that can be a trigger, particularly in older patients. So different triggers that, uh, that make the reflex happen. That's quite a confusing topic. RAS are the attacks of loss of consciousness where the heart slows down or stops. And in North America, those are included as breath-holding spells. So if you're in the United States, then they would include all RAS as a type of breath-holding spell, even though there isn't any uh, breath-holding. But uh, I think it's better to think of the RAS as attacks where the heart stops, that we, we've uh, described already. And in breath-holding, what happens is uh, an exaggeration of the normal um, breathing pattern in, in crying. So um, when you cry uh, uncontrollably and really upset, uh, what usually happens is it takes several breaths um, out. So you'd go <laughs> in expiration, breathing out. And then it's quite natural to get a bit stuck before you can <gasps> breathe in and then <laughs> out again. And some, particularly children preschool, sometimes they get stuck in that expiration with the breathe out and they can't catch their breath, they can't do that <gasps> in. I mean, when they're stuck out uh, is when they lose consciousness. And in that age group, what often happens is the children will go blue, very deep blue, very quickly within a few seconds. And that means that they're mixing their oxygenated blood and the venous blood, the deoxygenated blood, probably through channels in the lungs. So something about that situation opens up the channels, they mix their blood, they're not having as much oxygenated blood going through. And also the fact that they're, they've breathed out hard means that it's harder for venous blood to return into the chest because breathing in is what sucks the venous blood back into the heart and into the chest. So they're getting less blood returning and the blood that is passing um, through is not getting oxygenated properly and so they're not getting a full supply of oxygenated blood to the brain. So at least that's what we think happens. Crucially during the um, breath holding spell or expiratory apnea, the, um, the heart rate is normal. So the heart rate just carries on normally. If the heart rate um, slows dramatically or stops for a while, for 10 or 20 seconds, then I would call that just RAS.